Hello, this is Miss Moore, and today during chemistry, we're going to discuss density. Today's essential question, what is density and how is it measured? Okay, before you start today's lecture, make sure you have your calculators handy. We'll start with matter and mass. So chemistry is the study of matter. Its properties, its composition, meaning what it's made out of, and the changes it undergoes. Matter is anything that has mass and volume. So now let's talk about mass. Mass is the amount of matter that an object contains. And we use weight to measure matter. So what is weight? Weight is a measure of the gravitational pull on matter. On to volume. Volume is the amount of space an object occupies. So how much space in the world, how much yeah, space in the world something takes up. Okay. Now the volume of a liquid can be measured using a graduated cylinder. And a graduated cylinder is really just a fancy scientific measuring cup. Okay. And if you're measuring the volume of a liquid using a graduated cylinder, aka measuring cup, your units, and we'll be talking more about units in a later lecture, but the units would be something about liters. Okay, L stands for liters. Okay, and it could be liters or milliliters or kiloliters, but it's usually liters or milliliters. And then we have the volume of a solid. So the volume of a solid can be determined in two different ways. First of all, you can measure its length, width, and height, multiply them together, right? So you get length times width times height, and that will give you the volume of a solid. And that would be for a regularly shaped solid, like a square or something. And the units, when you're measuring this way, would be something cubed. So feet cubed or inches cubed, um, more often meters cubed, centimeters cubed, millimeters cubed, something like that. Okay. And you can also measure the volume of a sol solid by something called liquid displacement. So what you do is you take a solid and you add it to a graduated cylinder that already has a known volume of a liquid. And when you add that solid, you're going to obviously end up with looks like more liquid, right? The, the, the height of the, of the liquid will raise. So then you're going to subtract the original volume of the liquid alone from the volume of the liquid with the solid into it. And that will give you the, um, the volume of the solid. And often this, the units for this would be again in like milliliters or liters or something. Okay. So that's it for volume. Next up is density. Density, the whole point of the lecture. So density is a physical property and it can be used to help identify a substance. So different substances have, have different densities. Okay, so styrofoam has a very different density than, let's say, a piece of wood or a block of marble or something like that. Okay. So the definition of density is it's the ratio of mass to volume, which is why we started talking about mass and volume. So um, in a more mathy looking way, density equals mass divided by volume or D equals M over V with M, little m standing for mass and capital V standing for volume. All right, so that's the majority of the lecture. Now we're gonna try calculating some density. All right, let's try a couple density practice problems. So we have a sample of aluminum metal that has a mass of 8.4 grams and the volume is 3.1 centimeters squared. Just hope, sorry, 3.1 centimeters cubed Calculate the density of aluminum. Well, density equals mass over volume. So we have density equals the mass 
which is 8.40 grams, divided by the volume, which is 3.1 centimeters cubed. Um, so now we'll just divide and that'll give us, see, 2.70967419. And then we now have the units grams per centimeters cubed. Okay, so the final step is to figure out our sig figs. So let's go back to our original measurements. We have a mass of 8.40. Um, and so sig figs, well, the zero here is significant, right? Because it's after a decimal and there's a non-zero digit in front of it. So our mass has three sig figs and our volume here um, has two sig figs, which means our answer needs to have two sig figs. So we'll keep the two and the seven. And because the zero is smaller than five, we're just gonna drop the rest. So our final answer is 2.7 grams per centimeters cubed. And these units here are important. Okay, let's try one more problem. So we have diamond has a density of 3.26 grams per milliliter. What is the mass of a diamond that has a volume of 0.35 milliliters? All right, so we're gonna use the same equation, which is density equals mass over volume. But this time, we know density and volume, and we're trying to calculate mass. Okay, so we're gonna have, we'll start with our density here. We have 3.26 grams per milliliter equals, we don't know the mass, so that'll be our X, over volume, right, 0 0.350 milliliters. All right, so the easiest way to solve this type of problem when you have two fractions with an equal sign in between is to cross multiply so we'll end up here with x milliliters equals 3.26 grams times 0 0.350 milliliters, giving us x milliliters equals one point one four one grams milliliters. All right, so now, so what I did to get this number was to multiply these two, right? So now what we need to do is get the X by itself, this X. So I'm gonna divide both sides by milliliters, milliliters, leaving us with a mass of X equals 1.141 grams. And then once again, our last step is sig figs. So um, our density right here has three sig figs and our volume also has three sig figs because the zero is significant because it's after a decimal with a non-zero digit in front of it which means our answer needs to have three sig figs, the one, the one, and the four. The, the one that we're dropping is five or less, less than five. So final answer is 1.14 grams. All right, that's it for today. Have a good one.